Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is solving quadratic equations by graphing. We're going to first start off by solving x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0 by graphing. So what we need to do is to graph x squared minus 3x minus 10. We need to graph this. Well, if you remember here, our a is going to equal 1 our b equals negative 3, and our c equals negative 10. And the first thing we want to look for is our axis of symmetry. And so we will use our equation x equals negative b over 2a. And so x is going to equal 3 over 2 times 1. So x is going to equal 3 halves, which is the same thing as 1 and a half, 1 1.5. And so 1 and a half is going to be our axis of symmetry, and if on our graph we count up at least for x-axis by 1's, it means our axis of symmetry of 1 and a half is going to be right here. can draw that in. The next step is going to be to find the vertex. To find the vertex, write the original function x squared minus 3x minus 10, and now we'll substitute in that 1 and a half. So we'll have 1.5 squared minus 3 times 1.5 minus 10. When you solve all of that, we will get negative 12.25, or negative 12 and a fourth, which means our vertex is going to be at 1.5, negative 12.25. Well, we're going to need to count down on our y-axis by twos here, so negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14. And negative 12.25, we'll try our best to graph right here on our graph. The next step is to find our y-intercept. And we could put in 0 for all the x's, or just recognize that our c is negative 10. And so our y-intercept is here at negative 10. And now we get to do other points. Well, the first point we can use is the opposite of our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is one and a half away from the axis of symmetry, so the next point's going to be a half and one away, so we can graph that right here. Now, we do need to get some other points so we can get our graph going up in this general direction. So if we start off by saying, well, what happens when x equals 6? Let's just go out a little bit for what happens when x equals 6. Well, using the x squared minus 3x minus 10, if we put 6 in there, 6 squared minus 3 times 6 minus 10, and again, We'll get a y when this is all said and done. 36 minus 18 minus 10. And y is going to equal 8. So in x is 6, y is 8. So we can graph that point. Again, now we'll be counting up by 2's. 2, 4, 6, 8. That point's going to be at 6. 8, which is here. Well, we can graph on the opposite side of the axis of symmetry by counting. We're 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half away, so we're going to be a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 away, which puts us right here. Now we can attempt to draw in our smooth lines to see where our graph is going to cross the x-axis. Where it crosses the x-axis will be our solution. So we'll start on the right side. 
there. And now we'll continue going through the left side. There. And you'll notice that it pretty much crosses here perfectly and here perfectly. On the left side, that was at negative 2. On the right side, it was through 5. So our answers are going to be negative 2 and 5. Now, like a lot of things, there is a way to check this. And one of the ways we can check this is by substituting in negative 2 and 5 for x. Well, x squared minus 3x minus 10 should equal 0. If we put in negative 2 for x, we get negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 minus 10 equals 0. 4 plus 6 minus 10 needs to equal 0, and sure enough, 0 equals 0. What about the 5? Once again, start off with x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Substitute in the 5, so 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 10 needs to equal 0. 25 minus 15 minus 10 needs to equal 0. And sure enough, 0 equals 0. So that checks out our answer, two of them, negative 2 and 5. And as you can see from our key concept box, we have two unique real solutions as it crosses through the x-axis twice, and that's exactly what we have here. There will be a couple other options. We'll have one unique solution at times, and sometimes we'll have none. But in this first example, we had two unique real solutions. Before we do example two, let's define double root. The roots... of a quadratic function that are the same number. So spoiler alert here, we'll probably be solving for just one unique real solution in this equation. So we'll solve x squared plus 8x equals negative 16 by graphing. Well, if we have our x squared plus 8x equals negative 16, we need to make this thing equal 0 first. So if we add 16 to both sides here, this cancels, and we're left with x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0. And we can rewrite this then as f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 16 and go through our steps to graph. With that first step being finding the axis of symmetry. Well, we'll once again use our formula x equals negative b over 2a. And here we had a equals 1, b equals 8, and c equals 16. So x is going to equal negative 8 over 2 times a. When all said and done, x equals negative 4. So we can draw our line, our axis is symmetry, here at negative 4. Next, our vertex. Let's start off with our function. Substitute in negative 4 for x. And solve. and you get 0, which means our vertex is at the point negative 4, 0, which is here. Now we need to find our y-intercept. 
which we could put in 0 for x, or just recognize that c is 16, so our y-intercept is 16. And if we count up on our graph by 2s, right at the very tippy top, we'll have our point. And if we count over from that point, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the axis of symmetry, 1, 2, 3, 4 takes us here. We can draw in our nice smooth curve. Mm, kind of smooth. But notice our graph is only going to cross the x-axis once here, and that was at negative 4, so we have one solution, and that is negative 4. Now there is a way to check this as well. And in this check, let's check by factoring. Well, x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0, and if we factor that using looking for something that multiplies to be 16, that adds up to 8, 4 times 4 is 16, that adds up to 8. So then we can say x plus 4 times x plus 4 is going to equal 0. And using our zero product property rule, x plus 4 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. And in both of these, you can subtract 4 from both sides to get x equals negative 4, and x equals negative 4. So it checks out that negative 4 is our only solution. It is a double root. Well, as we look at our key concept box as we start example 3 here, we've checked off our two unique solutions. We've checked off our one unique real solution, so we're probably going to be looking at no real solutions for this one. Again, sorry to ruin the surprise. Let's go ahead now and graph f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 3. Our a is going to equal 1, b equals 2, and c equals 3. So let's start off by looking for that axis of symmetry again. Use our formula x equals negative b over 2a. So x is going to equal negative 2 over 2 times 1. So x is going to equal negative 1. So we can draw in our axis of symmetry here at negative 1. Next comes our vertex. We can use our original function, x squared plus 2x plus 3. Substitute in negative 1 for x, so negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. So we'll have 1 minus 2 plus 3, and that equals 2. So my vertex is going to be at negative 1, positive 2, which is here. Next up is my y-intercept. And again, you could put in 0 for x's, but that's just going to leave you with the c, which is 3. So my y-intercept is at 0, 3. And using my axis of symmetry, 1 away. Next point needs to be 1 away. And quite frankly, that's really all I need because this is going to curve up this way, this is going to curve up that way, and notice it's never going to cross this x-axis. I mean, no real solution, so I can just write my null set symbol as the answer, since there are no real solutions. So to summarize these first three examples, sometimes you'll have a graph that crosses your x-axis twice, and there'll be two unique solutions. Sometimes you'll have a double root, where you'll cross your x-axis once. There'll be one unique real solution. 
And sometimes you'll have, like we did here in example three, where it's not going to cross your x-axis, and you'll have no real solutions. Three different possibilities when you solve quadratic equations by graphing. Solve x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0 by graphing. And now we have the special directions. If integral roots cannot be found, estimate the roots to the nearest tenth. Back in example 1, when we drew our smooth curve in, we hit negative 2 and 5 perfectly. Sometimes that's not going to happen. It really takes a special case to hit the roots perfectly. In this example, we will not be able to find the roots perfectly, so we'll have to estimate the roots to the nearest tenth. So if we start off by looking to graph like we always do, here f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2, our a is equal to 1, our b is equal to negative 4, and our c is equal to 2. And so we'll start off with our axis of symmetry. Our formula, x equals negative b over 2a. x is going to equal 4 over 2 times 1. So x is going to equal 2. Easy enough of a start so far. Draw in our axis of symmetry here at 2. Next up is the vertex. Rewrite our original function, x squared minus 4x plus 2. So we'll have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 2. 4 minus 8 plus 2 results in negative 2. So my vertex is going to be at 2, negative 2, which is right here. Now where is my y-intercept? That is located at 2. So my y-intercept is right here. And using the axis of symmetry to help me find the other point, right now I am 1, 2 away. So I'm going to go 1, 2 away on the other side, which leaves me right here. And as I go to graph in my smooth curve, we'll notice, as previewed, our roots are not going to be integers, unfortunately. The first root here is going to be between 0 and 1. Our second root here is going to be between 3 and 4. Now what we get the opportunity to do is to estimate. And we're going to estimate to the nearest tenth. So a strategy to use here is to create an xy chart, an xy table, and we'll start off with our root between 0 and 1. We want to look, since we're rounding to the nearest tenth, for all of our x values between 0 and 1, such as 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, and so on. And we're going to be putting this into our function to see what our resulting y would be. So they have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, all the way to 9 tenths. Now, I already calculated these to save us a little bit of time, but what you would do is put 1 tenth into our function and see what the result is. Well, this result is 1.61, 1 and 61 hundredths. So that would mean if we had 1 tenth, you'd be at 1.61, somewhere up here. 2 tenths would be at one and twenty-four hundredths. So we're slowly going to be getting closer to our x-axis. Three-tenths is eighty-nine hundredths. Four-tenths is fifty-six hundredths. So again, getting closer and closer to our axis. 
5 tenths is 25 hundredths. So at this point, we're almost halfway between 0 and 1, and we're getting pretty close, pretty close to the axis. 6 tenths is negative 4 hundredths. So at that point, we've crossed. We've crossed over now, which means we've crossed our axis. Now, just to finish off our table here, we have negative 31 hundredths, negative 56 hundredths, and now we're getting further away from the axis, negative 79 hundredths. Now that we have this list, we want to see how close were we? What was our closest point to zero? Well, it's crossed between 5 tenths and 6 tenths for x. Which one was closest? Well, where's closer to zero? 25 hundredths or negative 4 hundredths? Well, hopefully you would pick negative 4 hundredths. So one of our answers here is going to be, round to the nearest tenth, 6 tenths. What about our other root? Well, if we once again create a nice xy chart, and this time we're looking to be between 3 and 4. So if we start off by going 3.1, 3 and 2 tenths, 3 and 3 tenths, and so on, all the way to 3 and 9 tenths, We'll once again be putting these values into this function. Well, 3 and 1 tenth would be negative 79 hundredths. So at 3 and 1 tenth, we're down here somewhere, which is to be expected. 3 and 2 tenths, negative 56 hundredths, so getting closer to the axis. Negative 31 hundredths, still getting closer. Negative 400 is getting very close. And then 2500, we've crossed the axis. And now to finish off, 5600, a positive 8900, 1 and 2400, and getting much further away from the axis. So again, our crossing point here was between 3 and 4 tenths and 3 and 5 tenths. Which one of these is closest to zero? Negative four hundredths or a positive twenty-five hundredths? Well, again, hopefully you would pick three and four tenths. That value is the closest one to the y being zero. Remember, when the y is zero, we're on our x-axis. So our solution here is three and four tenths. So we have two answers. Six tenths and three and four tenths. So sometimes you're not going to get perfect integer answers, so you have to create a table and substitute in your nearest tenths values to find which ones gets you the y that's closest to zero in order to estimate to the nearest tenth. In our last example of this lesson, Consuela built a model rocket for her science project. The equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 250t models the flight of the rocket launched from ground level at a velocity of 200 feet per second, where h is the height of the rocket in feet after t seconds. Approximately how long was Consuela's rocket in the air? Use a graphing calculator to graph the related function. Well, that's a relief that we don't have to graph on a regular graph and then have to try to estimate this, especially with an equation like this. Now, I used Desmos.com and actually the Desmos app on the iPad. I typed in negative 16x squared plus 250 X. And again, you could use a TI calculator to get this as well, and you might have to change your zoom level. And I tweaked my zoom level and came up with this. Pretty cool. You can notice on the x-axis, that's going to be our seconds, and you can see our 0 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20. 
you can see our feet, 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, so it's a very large graph going up in the y-axis. And notice we have two intercepts here at the 0, 0, and you can see the flight of the rocket going up where it reached a peak at about 7 seconds or so at 976 feet. And then it came back down to Earth and crossed again at about 15 and 6 tenths seconds. Well, the first intercept was when we launched at 0 seconds, 0 feet. And then we had hitting the ground at 15 and 6 tenths of a second. So, using this graph, we can say our answer is 15 and 6 tenths seconds. And that is it for this lesson on solving quadratic equations by graphing. Good luck.